thousands of eateries around the country, would kill for the opportunity to appear on diners, drive-ins, and dives. But those that make the cut have strict guidelines to follow. Here are some of the rules restaurants have to follow on the hit reality show. Hey, I'm Guy Fieri, and you know what I need? I need you riding shotgun! I'm on my way to Flavortown! This is Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives! The production team at Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives gets restaurant referrals from a variety of sources. Many people submit ideas directly to the show, and the producers also do an extensive amount of research, reading local media, customer reviews, and more. Guy Fieri once told People Magazine, Our research team is like, I think they all work for the FBI. That's the kind of group they are. After a restaurant has caught the eye of the Triple D team, then the hard work starts. Hours-long phone calls take place to see if the restaurant is the right fit for the show. A Colorado restaurant that was featured in Season 11 told Thrillist, The show reached out to us and we basically had to sell them on our place over the course of a few weeks. According to restaurant owners who spoke to Twin Cities Business, after being approached by diners, drive-ins, and dives, the businesses had to send all kinds of pictures of their establishment and their food, along with recipes and ingredient lists. One restaurant owner who was selected for the show said they had to submit half a dozen recipes for Fietti and his team to review. And it's important to note that all this pitching goes on before the restaurants ever have a guarantee of whether or not they will even make it on the show. Diners, drive-ins, and dives may be about showcasing the more low-key, under-the-radar dining establishments around the country, but the flavors they are looking for are anything but. When the team is combing through dozens and dozens of restaurants in any given city, trying to narrow it down to just a few, the bar has to be set high. According to David Page, the creator and former executive producer of Triple D, the producers heavily vet the quality of food at each restaurant they consider featuring. He told Heavy Table, "...every place we go has to make real food, and it has to be good enough." The first rule that restaurants have to follow on the show is that frozen food will never cut it. Page reiterated, This has to be handmade food. It better be done from scratch. It better be made right. And it better be good. Page also admitted that there have even been situations where the crew arrived at a location and then canceled their plans because, in his words, the key to the show is that they have to meet that bar. If that isn't heaven, I don't know what is. We definitely celebrate different gods. After months of phone calls, research, and recipe testing, restaurants still won't know if they made it onto diners, drive-ins, and dives until they get the stamp of approval that matters. And that's Guy Fieri's. Everything has to go through him, from the locations to the restaurants to the specific dishes that will be featured on the show, according to Thrillist. I'm always looking for great restaurants. I'm always on the hunt. Additionally, things can change up until the last minute, if that's what Fieri wants. One restaurant owner in St. Paul told Twin Cities Business, "...I think we cooked every item on the menu three times with Guy. He wanted to try everything on the menu just about. Then they decided what to feature." Another restaurant owner from Wilmington, Delaware, told a similar story, revealing to Town Square, Delaware, "...Fieri looked at the menu and decided what he wanted to have. He picked two items I would not have predicted, but he loved them." If you're going to be featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, you'll be showcasing a lot more than just some ingredients on a plate. The show is also looking to tell engaging stories that highlight small-town spirit and American work ethic, and that takes a lot of work to develop for TV. That means that each restaurant Triple D considers has to have some kind of interesting backstory — how they came about, why they're important to the community, or what they're doing differently from everybody else. The show's producers and writers work with each restaurant to hone in on what their story is and how to script it for the cameras. A lot of people don't understand the J-28. July 28th is for… It's a Peruvian Independence Day. Yeah. And we open on July 28th also. So it's not just great food, it's Peruvian pride. The owners of Cafe Nooner in Eureka, California, shared a peek at that process, detailing their experience being featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives on their website. They wrote that during the screening phase, the producers asked them who the main character for their episode was going to be, along with a series of questions to make sure that person could talk about their food and their restaurant in an engaging way. The moment a restaurant agrees to be featured on the show, they're agreeing to pivot on a moment's notice around the show's production schedule. The businesses don't get any say in the filming dates, but rather are told by the show when to close up shop and prepare for the crew's arrival. And sometimes that comes with really short notice. When Cafe Nooner got the call that they'd been selected to be on the show, they were told they had six days to get the restaurant ready for filming, after being told to expect at least a month's notice. And in Wilmington, Delaware, the owner of one restaurant learned she was going to be featured just over a week before the crew showed up, according to Town Square, Delaware. Once the crew arrives, it's a tight schedule of filming for about two days. The first day, cameras capture the atmosphere of the restaurant, plus all those mouth-watering close-ups and beauty shots of the food. At some point on day two, Fieri himself shows up and films his kitchen segment with the chef, as well as his interviews with diners in the restaurant. Producer David Page explained to Heavy Table that the tight schedule is necessary. When the crew arrives in any given city, they're usually there to shoot several different restaurants for different episodes of Triple D.
Making an appearance on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for independent restaurant owners to get their name out there. So the stakes are high to present their business proudly and whip up the best plate of food they've ever made for Guy Fieri. And a big part of that is being prepared. Producers of Triple D require that restaurants have their kitchens prepped and ready to go before filming begins. And definitely before Fieri arrives. That means having all the ingredients laid out and ready to go. After that, the cameras start rolling, capturing the cooking process and beautiful plated up dishes, sometimes multiple times. That's right, restaurants also need to have their kitchens prepped for making multiple rounds of the same menu items, just to make sure the cameras catch every angle of the food. If you don't get it right the first time, you need a fresh plate of food to reshoot with. Much of the charm of diners, drive-ins, and dives comes from Fieri's spike-tipped, larger-than-life personality and predictably unpredictable zingers. Okay. Cradle it. <laughs> you want me to cradle, cradle it? Cradle these buns. Cradle the buns. Yes. And that's part of the magic of the show. Fieri rolls in the kitchen, bringing totally authentic excitement and energy into the scene in a mostly unscripted fashion. Going off script may be part of Fieri's job, but for everyone else, there's a meticulous plan of action that has to be followed. And it's a big secret to the show's success. For the restaurant staff, staying on script is absolutely key if they want to see their episode make it to air. The flow of the episode is scripted out well in advance. So in order to get the story right, everyone has to stick to the plan. According to Heavy Table, Triple D's intense filming schedule is also to blame, as the crew spends a full day shooting footage of the cooking and plating process for each dish. Then Fieri shows up the next day to reshoot the whole process with the restaurant chef. Finally, the editors take all that footage and weave it together into the finished episode we see on TV. So it's crucial that all the food footage is consistent, no matter which day it was shot on. If fans knew that Guy Fieri was about to roll up to their favorite local restaurant, many would probably be running to snap a selfie. But in order to limit the potential chaos and make room for a full crew and a bunch of filming equipment, restaurants are told right up front that a condition of getting featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives is closing up shop for a few days during the shooting process. Now, if you're thinking about all those happy diners you see in every Triple D episode, there's an explanation for that. They're all genuine fans of the food, but for the most part consist of family, friends, and a few loyal customers who are specifically invited by the restaurants to be a part of the filming, according to People Magazine. Getting the chance to appear on the show is pretty much guaranteed to bring in some serious publicity and customers for any restaurant. The rigorous production process is almost like an investment for future success. On top of that, being on the show requires a financial investment as well. Restaurants don't get paid to appear on diners, drive-ins, and dives, and they don't get paid or reimbursed for all the ingredients used during filming. For some restaurants, the costs really add up, as some have to spend money fixing up and preparing their restaurant for the cameras. The owners of Cafe Nooner mentioned the rush to paint the inside and outside of their restaurant, plus replacing fixtures, removing equipment, and more. There's also the added cost of lost business from spending several days closed for filming. Several restaurant owners who spoke to Twin Cities Business about their experience on Triple D said the overall costs were as high as $15,000, between wasted food product and cleaning costs. In the end, though, if Fieri is promising a 200% increase in business thanks to the show, those expenses will all be worth it. Obviously, getting to be featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives is a major opportunity for any chef. Imagine the feeling of putting your heart and soul into a dish and having Fieri call it Funkalicious. But as tempting as it may be to try and put as many dishes as possible in front of Fieri when you get the chance, chefs have to resist the urge. For one, the host isn't interested in extra meals, which makes sense when he's about to chow down for the cameras. Fieri has confessed that on filming days, the only thing he consumes is fruit and veggie juice. And it's not just him. As Fieri says he brings a juicer on the road and makes everybody drink up to boost immunity, among the whole hardworking crew, according to People. It's also worth noting that the restaurant owners and chefs on diners, drive-ins, and dives likely won't even get much face time with Fieri himself until the cameras are rolling. According to the show's executive producer, this is a production trick designed to keep everything as authentic as possible for the cameras. Being considered for diners, drive-ins, and dives brings excitement, anticipation, stress, long days, and lots of fun. But unfortunately, restaurants aren't allowed to share that excitement with many people until it's all said and done. During the interview and production process, restaurants are asked to sign strict confidentiality agreements. They can't let the public know they were chosen for the show. And if word does get out, they aren't allowed to spill any specific details about the filming schedule. After the diners, drive-ins, and dives crew has come and gone, the waiting game begins. Restaurants are told they'll be notified about 30 days before their episode is set to air on Food Network. Network, but it can be several months after filming before that time comes. Of course, once the secret is out, the real whirlwind begins. As one restaurant owner explained to Thrillist, it changes your life immediately. It's impressive. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.